Here we are with Trevor Taylor, lead singer with Crank Court, uh, Roughed Up, and do we say the business here as well? Uh, it can do, certainly on the cards for them at the moment, but uh, yeah, it's been honoured to do some guest vocals for them for the time being. And Stomping Ground? Uh, they're now, yeah, still on a... Uh, a decade-long hiatus, but they're still about. Yeah. So he's can we'll make a reference to Tottenham at some point because uh, I know you support Spurs. Uh, yeah. When, when, what, what attracted you to uh, to punk and I in the first place? So, yes, yeah, I don't know. About thirteen years old, even before that, eleven years old. The first thing I ever picked up was Ramones Mania from my local record shop, yeah? Yeah. And uh, there was no turning back from there. And then as I discovered that music, my uncles and that, who all grew up within this area where I am now. So I'm from, yeah, families from Hackney, Tottenham area. Yeah. They, were, they grew up in that generation, that golden generation of 70s music. And uh, I sent, from them, I got The Clash, I don't know who the rejects were, and I, I've got the hand-me-down stories as well about football and all the rest of it. It was more or less like match made in heaven to me. And, uh, yeah, took that and ran with it. And I've not looked back. This has become in shaped, shaped oil music. Uh, or I shaped myself around oil music because it, it spoke to me as a kid. And I'm still here doing it at 30. So which, so which was the first band you saw live then? First band I saw live? Yeah. Dropkick Murphys, believe it or okay. not. Okay. Yeah, because that was the yeah, subject at the time. Yeah, but yeah, love where, that. Where was that? That had been in Northampton. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, had a had a good, good, uh, good. I don't know. We don't have that anymore. We don't have that. Do you know that weird mid two thousands pop punk influence on the younger generation? I mean, it's not yeah. maybe what I'm listening to now, but that was important to have at that time, right? Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I think that a lot of people saw that and, and ran with it. Certainly in London, too, when I was coming over summer times. And the, um, yeah, fucking hell, here was something else. It was just everywhere. You could pick up on it and run with it. It was really good. Yeah. So when when did yeah. uh, when did the band Crank Court form then? So I would have been 21 years old. So we're talking about all nine years ago coming up this year soon. So 2013, I was me and uh, Tim, who was the original drummer. Tim was, li was living in Tottenham Hill, and I was just down the road here uh, in Green Lanes. And um, we knew each other through mutual friends, and we were dead set on starting a project together, starting a project together. And nothing, as, as you know, this, it takes a while for these things to get going. And one day we're on the train and we bump into this kid who's dressed pseudo skinhead style and we're like, right, okay, what is he about? He said, we're on the way to Camden Town. And that ended up being Nick Sarnella, who ended up being the bassist. And he knew Charlie, which is his matey from, they're playing the hardcore scene together. Yeah. And then we took it and ran from there. And that lasted the best part of three and a bit years. Uh, I left to the army at 21 as well and I come back six months out of basic training and people were buzzing off that demo yeah which uh, was a bit of a pain in the ass because I couldn't focus on the army I kept on trying to run away to come do fucking rock and roll yeah yeah but that's that's the early early days of it and that was the Trouble from London demo yep Trouble from London would have been the original yeah we did a tape at first and then after we were done with the tape, we uh, we got a pressing through Contra for percentage yeah. only. And then the rest is history, really. Did everything else with uh, Rebellion over yeah. in Holland. So how, how, how did you find getting gigs back then? Um, well, we are uh, pretty well connected with the oil scene because I was one of the younger faces there at the moment, right? So as soon as I got something we were offered something pretty quickly, which was great. Yeah. Uh, Fiddle at Elbow, we played a lot at Little Bits and Bobs. It, I think when we first came out, people didn't know what's quite to make of us because there was nobody really doing that rock and rolly uh, music at that point. We got some weird festivals in Barcelona, and not bad weird, but 
we got a, we were playing like these artsy artsy fests and stuff like this. And we we're like, whoa, okay, people are really liking this. So kind of crack on and and see where we take it. But so yeah, the, it was easy. The because uh, the the tenuous connection is that you, you took your your name from a a demo tape that was on on YouTube. That's, and it, it was a badly yeah. recorded demo tape because it, it was me that transferred the master tape over to these to a, a cassette, and I didn't okay. know at the t- I didn't know at the time how badly they were they were transferred across until afterwards. Okay. So okay. Uh, and and that was for a band that I was involved with called On Parole, and that's uh, right. Th- they that's did right. crime court on both demo tapes because. Uh, the, uh, and the, the way that I found out, I didn't know that they were badly recorded, but I was staying with uh, Lol prior from the business. And okay. uh, right. he had he had one of the tapes and he said, uh, the tape's really crap. And I'm like, well, it doesn't sound <laughs> crap to me. So then I heard it and I was like, oh, right, okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll send you a better one. So I'd, I'd sent him the, the better one when I got back up to Scotland. and okay. uh, And then about... Two, three months later, we did a deal with uh, No Future, which came through uh, LOL for the uh, okay. Country Trip for Heroes Volume 2. That's uh, it. Yeah, that's the one I, that I know as well. That's certainly how I got introduced to the band, is the Country Trip for Heroes bit. Yeah. I mean, um, we, but... we, we had a lot of good times. You know, it's uh, we probably should have done some more gigs, but it, it was quite difficult back then in Scotland to, uh, to yeah punk gigs. Uh, it was Lowell originally from Scotland as well, was he? No, no, he, he, he was from... South London. Uh, he was from South London, but he, his family's all from Stratford, which is where the West End okay. connection came from. Okay, yeah, 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 makes sense. You know, but it, it, I mean, it was a, a good time back then, you know, there, 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 there was a lot of things happening, um, oh. 80, 81, 82, uh, and then it did change, 83, 84, a lot of bands broke up. You know, yeah. and, uh, it, it was quite difficult putting gigs on and there seemed to be a split uh, with things. Uh, so you, you, you got the name Crown Court. That's right. Uh, when So the, the, did the lineup change when you came out of the army? Yeah, I don't want to t- touch too much on that. I left the army to really have a stab at, at the band. Um, yeah. I won't go into the bits and bobs, but some other people had some other plans. I really wanted to do that. We were gaining a lot of momentum and we were getting a lot of attention. We did not think that we would get uh, yeah. off the back of that original World P. Yeah. Um, I really took it seriously. And I, yeah, as well as do the music bit and try to get everything the way we want it on stage, I'm also managing the band. So it was very right. much, I felt like we built it up from the ground up. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, fucking hell, the graft I put in on top of being in the army was like, right, okay, if I'm going to do this, I need to commit. Yeah. And I went to commit. Uh, Tim, who I'm still very close with now, had two beautiful boys, uh, twins. So yeah. I needed a little time to, yeah, be a dad and get that going. And when it was time to up our tools again, not everybody else was on side. Some people, as you very well know, had picked other paths and they are doing very well at them now yeah but yeah they weren't interested in doing the skinhead game no more the war game no more so fair enough i'm not here to yeah to change people's minds we're still doing what we're doing yeah i mean that's it you, you bands and people have other ideas and move on you know what i mean that's that's just part of being in a band and you know you you you, you just got to live with it you know same as a relationship you don't ever want to be in a relationship with somebody if they don't want to be with you if you know what i mean yeah so you kind of like you did how did you find the replacements then well the replacement bassist i've known since we were teenagers we've probably been in this skinhead scene probably yeah as long as i can remember being in london ralph's been in london so right. through him we did a bit of trial and error right who do we got doing stuff, doing interesting stuff. Let's roll with this. Who can we pick up? Who's got the chops? Who can we like incorporate? Now, there was a lot of trial and error, and there was a lot of me wandering, trying to not interview people like, like we're doing sitting down, but yeah, yeah. Like, let me know what you're about. 
Are you, is your head in the right place? Is your mouth in the right place? Which is yeah. more important. You need that cohesion. Otherwise you're going to end up in a gang fuck like the situation was before. Um, and we need to take it. Can you hit what we want to hit in terms of music? And that took a little while. That took the best part of a year and a half after the army trying to sort everything out. 2019 came and went and we really, we started to go get the unit that we got and we were still diffy a drummer. And we were given the gift of Jack, who's from South London, Jack Lewis. He's also one of the doormen down uh, within the scene. And it was like, all right, cool. Like, let's get you on board. We've got Danny Swan from Glasgow as well, who's yeah. an absolute killer on the guitar. He also yeah. played in Half Charge, which was something that definitely caught our interest. Yeah. And uh, we took it and ran with that and uh, went up to Glasgow in the middle of COVID and, and started writing this LP. The LP should be with you just under 10 months, hopefully, without any pressing plant fuck-ups. Is so, that on, uh, on Rebellion? No, that will be on Rondelle. That will be on Rondelle. Okay. So he, he, is Ronnie in the band then? Ronnie Hammersmith? Yeah. So Ronnie's helped us out a great deal. We, we yeah. love working with Ronnie. Um, I, we would very much like Ronnie in the band. That is up to Ronnie. That is Ronnie's decision to make. He yeah. loves playing with us. He just did a gig out with us in Serbia. He's yeah. nothing but an asset and nothing but a positive character to have around. Yeah. But Ronnie's a very busy man as well. So it's up to Ronnie. Uh, he will be playing with us at Rebellion in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's up. It's yet to be decided, but that stands to your man. He's very much welcome in the crowd. So top, yeah? We talked about stomping ground. How did that come off the, the, off the ground? What, stomping ground? Yeah. So as I was in it as a kid, uh, literally, I think I started that band when I was 14, 14, maybe, yeah, right. 14, 15. So yeah. we were gigging, gigging. We had one really, really great gig in London. But then as you do as you're a kid, uh, yeah, I wasn't absolutely focused on that. That never really felt like it got going. I think when you're that young too, people, oh, it's nice to see and all the rest of it, but I don't know how seriously it's taken. Um, or maybe it's just not what people wanted to hear and I needed to elaborate and write a bit more. But um, I feel like, yeah, that came and went. And then immediately after that, we got involved with the beginnings of Crown Court. So things really they ended up in the right way. Yeah, yeah. And it's kind of like roughed up, you know, kind of like King and Castle. It's kind of like it's probably my most played uh, song over the past three months. You know, well, and, I, really and, and I, I liked it because it it, it 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 wasn't it wasn't straight up street punk. There was a bit of melody towards it, and I, I, yeah. I found I found that your vocal delivery is slightly different to the way that you would treat a, a crime court song. Oh, I appreciate that. the The rough duck is uh, that's a big collaboration. It's half Dutch, half English, with a little. There's a Belgian geezer in it as well, but um. Yeah, that's not going to be your stereotypical punk in any way, show or form. We've just started hashing out the new stuff to do with it. And I, I love to play with it because it, is, it does definitely challenge the border yeah. without going too far from what we are supposed to be wanting to be doing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, nothing but good things to say and can't wait to start pumping the other stuff out. I really, I've got high hopes and uh, feel really positive about it. So who's in the band then? Ronnie's in the band. Who? It's a secret, mate. I'll tell you. <laughs> okay. I mean, I, I think I've worked out three of them anyway, so, you know. That's all right. But, yeah, no, it's, 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 all, all, I've heard all four of them, and all, all four of the songs are, are, are pretty high standard. Oh, cheers, mate. I appreciate that. Do you, do you think you'll take that to uh, a, a, a live place? There's plans too, yeah. Uh, I won't say no. Crown Court's got a tour coming up in November that is yet to be confirmed, but yeah, it is very much solidified in, yeah, up until the point where it is completely moving with wheels. And I will say, if I get it my way, roughed up, we're having a cameo appearance on that tour as well. Cool. But yeah, yet to be confirmed all of that. So what's your inspiration for, for the songs that you write, apart from Tottenham? Because there's a, a few Tottenham, Tottenham songs in there. Yeah, couple. Uh, everything that you hear, lyrics-wise, um, they're all stories. They're all something to do with something that I've lived in past. 
and every single one of them, bar none. There's not just waffle in there. There'll be little nods to moments in time that I've done without sending like I'm up my own ass. But yeah, I draw that inspiration, yeah, from shit I've lived because I've done plenty of shit living. And that is the absolute truth. And I'm, I'm that's my way of coming across. Um, Music-wise, glam, glam and 80s punk. And that is the way, lots of 77. But yeah, I love love my New York doors, love my, yeah, Bowie, T-Rex, you name it, the junk shop glam. That is my bread and butter. Plus your stuff like On Parole, Skin Deep, you mentioned in Scotland bands as well. That niche 80s skinhead music, that's me all over. So, don't, yeah, musical-wise, that's where that's coming from. Lyrical-wise, yeah. Life, man, life. So, he, uh, out of the, the bands, that are, the newer bands that are around at the moment, which ones do you do you rate? There's a lot, lot of good shit coming up. There's... There's boys in England I'm very impressed with. Um, with yeah, everybody's got to toe the line and, and kind of see what they, they want to do. Um, not going to say too much about who's in, who's out. That's not really my game, but yeah. But I had the v- very big pleasure of playing with Chain Cult on the weekend. I enjoy them. We'll give them a nod. Uh, if you don't know them already, really like what they're doing. Yeah. And we can crack on. But yeah. How did the uh, the... the the performance, the, the vocal with the business come about? Well, Mike Brands, he's a good friend and also ex-mob. Um, he was a signaller back in time. Um, but we always got on like a house on fire. Um, Mike also helped us out one serious time. He's going to laugh if he sees his fucking interview. <laughs> but uh, we were in Germany once and we had basically been let out without any rental instruments into which the arch rivals came to our, our saviors, basically. And uh, since that day on, we spent the day on the piss fucking walking around Berlin. And we've been tired ever since. Really enjoy that geezer. And he was doing the business duties from before. And I think Sebi no longer could could do it because I think Sebi's a very, very busy geezer. I know that Stomper has been on the uh, road for nonstop for the last couple of months. And I think they were looking for a new geezer. And he said, Trevor's the man in Crown Court. He's in London. Get at him. So we've been there. I've had an absolute enjoyment out of it. It's it's been brilliant. Couldn't be uh, any happier. But yeah, more stuff to come soon, hopefully. Yeah, are they? Uh, I know they did that one new song about six months ago. Uh, right. Have, have they got new songs coming through? The two Steves. I believe I'm not the man to ask. You know what I mean? I, I heard some Steve stuff that Steve's got. Um, but yeah, I don't know. You have to ask Steve. Well, that's not for me. I'm not gonna. Yeah, I don't know what to say about that that's entirely Steve's decision yeah any more dates coming up with them the business well we had a bunch booked before Covid a lot like we had Sweden on the cards Denmark on the cards we had St. Petersburg and Moscow as well but I don't think that's going to happen if I'm completely honest Um, uh, wait and see I don't know again that's yeah I I can speak for Crown Court I don't I can't speak for the business right I'd love to And yeah. I'm really hoping that that happens soon, but um, here we are. So what I know you've touched on some of the the, the, the points that you're doing. What, what what's lined up in the future then for for Crown Court? If you can put everything into uh... well, Crown Court, we've got we've got some good stuff coming our way, right? We've got the LP. LP should be out springtime 2023 without any hiccups. Um, we're going to hopefully hit the tour with in November. That would just be a European do. We've got bits and bobs early 23 over in Europe. I think we've got Athens on the cards, Switzerland's on the cards, a few odd sods there. Once that LP's out, we're going to the States. We will find a way over. Um, we've got a really good connection without naming names, but we can't look forward enough to be to be going across. And that should be us, really, until the next year coming. So really buzzing on the material that we've got, though. Uh, it's a bit more together in a bit. It's harder hitting, but it's still got that finesse that people want. Yeah. I think it's crossed. So, yeah, we'll wait and see. Thank you very much, Trevor Taylor from uh, Crown Court, Roughed Up. Yeah, no problem. <laughs>